Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 2, Dynamics. The section is 2 point B, Forces and Acceleration. Here's the scenario that you can read. Angelica is standing on a very low friction skateboard while Blake pushes her from the motion detector, which is set to record velocity as a function of time. In Trial 1, Blake pushes very softly. In Trial 2, Blake pushes harder. In Trial 3, Blake pushes Angelica the hardest. Before we look at part A, I would like to supply you with some notes. Acceleration. There are, the idea of average acceleration comes from the change of velocity over the change of time. You could take the average from the slope. So the slope is the change of the y over the change of x. Acceleration would be the change of v, velocity, over the change of time. So acceleration is essentially the change of velocity. Using that idea, we can say that here, each one of the slopes in the velocity versus time graph represents the acceleration. Okay, let's answer part A. When Blake pushes harder, the slope of the velocity versus time graph increases. Since the slope represents the acceleration. The acceleration is larger because the slope increased. When Blake stops pushing, which is represented here at time t, you could see it goes flat. When Blake stops pushing, the slope of velocity versus time graph becomes flat, or we can say that it is zero. Since the slope is, at, is now zero, this means that the acceleration is also zero. Part B. The student then repeats the experiment, this time with Angelica holding two textbooks and then four textbooks. Sketch on the diagram versus the time, velocity versus time for Angelica with the two and four textbooks. Before we do that, I would like to explain to you what Newton's first law of motion is. Newton's first law of motion comes from Galileo and it states every object continues in its state of rest or uniform velocity in a straight line as long as no net force acts on it. A easier way of thinking about this is this saying, an object at rest will tend to be at rest, an object in motion will tend to be in motion. The reason for that is this idea of inertia. The first law can also be described as the law of inertia. Inertia. Object with a greater mass has more inertia. It would take more force to move that object. You could see that moving a 300 kilogram mass object is going to require more force than a person pushing on a 30 kilogram object. Inertia is not mass. Inertia is a property of mass. Like you would say your phone is an iPhone. The iPhone is the property of the phone. Okay. It's not the phone. It's a part of a phone because a cell phone can be an Android or an iPhone. So mass, one of its characteristics is this idea of inertia. One way to think about inertia is inertia is the property of a body that tends to maintain its states of motion. That means an object at rest will tend to stay at rest because of inertia, and an object that is moving will want to continue moving because of inertia. An easy way to think about a moving object is this. Passengers still moving forward at the speed the car was moving, once it hits this, the windshield provides the unbalanced force decreasing the driver forward motion. 
it stops the car. But there was nothing stopping the person. So the person goes forward because that's what its motion was tending. The person and the car was already moving forward. Nothing stopped the person. That's why the person goes forward. This is the reason why you wear your seatbelt. Because the seatbelt is going to provide the force for the inertia for you to not go forward. Okay. And using that idea, we could see how this adding more textbook, adding more mass will affect the velocity and time graph. The first one I'm going to make in blue is the two textbooks. Should it be more or less? Should it have more acceleration or less acceleration? We know from Newton's first law, it's going to have more mass. So it's going to have more inertia. So it's going to accelerate less. So then it's going to become flat. And we say this was at flat. And we would say this is at two textbooks. Then let's do the fourth textbook. Four textbooks is going to have more inertia, therefore decreasing the acceleration. And I'm going to just to label it four textbook. last part is part C. The following statement is written to describe what will happen after the five seconds when Blake is no longer pushing. Cross out any incorrect statements and explain why they are incorrect. Here it says, after Blake stops pushing, which is at time T, Angelica will continue at a constant speed for a few seconds before she runs out of force. Then she will decelerate and stop. Pause the video and try to do this. When you write a explanation, make sure you follow the checklist. I wrote, assuming there is no external force like friction or air resistance, Angelica will continue at a constant speed after Blake stops pushing. That is due to Newton's first law of motion. Her velocity will not change until acted upon an external force. It is not the acceleration so she made a mistake here by saying before she runs out of force that is wrong she's gonna run out of in acceleration but she's going to stay in motion and she will continue in motion until another force acts on it in real life, the reason why we slow down is because air resistance is pushing back against us as well as the um, drag and friction that we are producing with our foot. Okay, there you go. These are all the notes as well as solution for unit two, point B.